But the dental school has a very rich history at UAB. Um, the dental school started in 1948, and UAB didn't become a university until 1969. So you think about what was going on in Birmingham in 1948. It was the dental school and the middle school were here, and they collaborated together to form what's called the Joint Health Sciences. You know, both programs were relatively small and said, you know, we don't have to reduplicate the wheel, and so came up with this Department of Joint Health Sciences, so it was truly co-administrated by dentistry and, and medicine, to teach the biomedical sciences. So instead of each program hiring an anatomist and a biochemist, they shared this joint health sciences. And that history has continued. Um, UAB became a university in 1969. And the fact that we had graduate programs here before it was a university it really has changed the makeup of the university itself, that it's quite unique that we have about 22,000 students here on campus and about a third of those being graduate students because this university grew up as a, as a as a graduate program first. And we've continued with this joint health science model ever since, and which has broadened to other programs as well. But we currently, and, and, and we've had great faculty, great instructors, great core instructors for decades in this program. And we, we truly have four of the best core instructors within the joint health science as far as dental specific courses that we ever have. Currently, we actually take many of the, the biomedical science courses with optometry, um, jointly administered to optometry and dentistry because our needs are very similar. We went to a model about a decade ago, which at the time was really cutting edge in dentistry, where we went away from teaching a biochemistry course and a physiology course. Now our students still get biochemistry and physiology, but they get it, they take cardiovascular and respiratory and renal and GI and musculoskeletal hematology and endocrinology and within this we call it a systems-based approach students get structure function pathology and intervention within a system they still get biochemistry and physiology but it's it's taught within a system that builds on 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 itself that you know once you know the heart and how the heart of heart operates and works and you you think about the the pulmonary system the lungs and how that affects the heart and then renal how that affects the heart and the lungs and it, and it really builds it on, on each other. And you know, a decade ago, we were being asked to, at a national level to go visit other schools, um, give our model at national meetings. And so we were really on the cutting edge of, of this kind of a national trend. Now schools that haven't gone to a system-based approach really feel like dinosaurs. And they just feel behind the times. And we've been doing this very successfully for over a decade. With, and it has strengthened every year since we started this program. Dentistry was so important to this university from the get-go. The very first president of this university was a dentist. Um, in fact, the first and third president of this university was a dentist. And it's, you know, we really have been just a strength because the dental school has so much going for it. And even though we are a relatively small program, as far as dental schools go, we are excellent in research, clinical, service, you know, scholarly activity and, you know, it's hard to excel in all those areas and the school's done it very well for a long time. We spent some time dreaming how we think dental school should work. And, and I remember um, having these discussions about if you had a kid coming to dental school, would you do things differently than we were doing? And the answer was yes. Um, and so we made some changes and we started with kind of these global thoughts of what we were do. And one of them was early clinical experiences, um, a foundation in ethics and culture. And so our students now come and the two very first courses they take are actually ethics and dentistry and dentistry and culture. Um, you know, they also take the dental courses, but we are graduating health professionals, not technicians. It's so important for our students to have a, a foundation in ethics and a foundation in how dentistry fits into the global scheme of healthcare in the world. Um, it's just been super important. It's, it's been a really positive. As part of that as well, we were, you know, traditional dental school, a lot of clinical experiences are delayed. And it seems like we suck the enthusiasm out of students sometimes because they came here to be dentists and yet they were not doing dental things until later in the curriculum. So we actually have turned that around and our students do some things very early. In fact, our students are actually taking alginate impressions on each other. What does that mean? 
means they're going to be in each other's mouths on Friday. And the impression itself isn't so important, but think about all the things you need to do to be able to get in somebody's mouth. You need to know how to take a medical history, how to take a blood pressure, which is standard of care in all patients. Um, you better know something about medical emergencies and allergies, how to set up a chair, how to put on the PPE and the gown and all that, how to wash your hands, how to talk to somebody, how to seat somebody, let alone the actual technique and of taking an impression. And we cover all that within just the first few weeks of dental school. To, again, to, to get the students in and make these things very meaningful because the first impressions they take are on each other and they get to be the patients as well. So they, they get to feel what, it, what it's like to be in, uh, in the role of the patient. And then they have all this early baseline knowledge that we teach in these small group activities, including you know, four-handed dentistry, how to do an oral exam, that then they know how to do it and they learn how to do it right. And then we put them in clinic to be doing that right away. And they're doing that right now already. Like I said, just a month into the program, they're already in the clinic things and we build on that throughout the first couple of years in a lot of ways. Um, we dreamed of ways to bring the clinic experience early into our curriculum including a unique curriculum theme called case-based education where students are given a case and and there's things in this case they've not learned because um, we want to emphasize lifelong learning I mean, that happens to reality and practice you get somebody in that has a medical condition you never heard of and you've got to look it up you have to talk to folks you've got to be evidence-based in your decision making and it teaches these students early on these concepts that be able to look at a case with something you don't know what it is on a radiograph because you haven't learned it or you um, or, and it really integrates the biomedical behavioral and clinical sciences and students have to put that together even doing treatment plans in the first year and we work in small group facilitated sessions with faculty then as guides, not as a lecturer, but as really just a way to guide students' thoughts because students sometimes can be smart wrong. And I love that thought because they look something up, they read it, they don't know how that really impacts care and they don't interpret it in the right way. That's what I mean by smart wrong. They're a little wrong, but at least they were evidence-based about it. And so we can steer the students on on what those cases and how things, how to use that data and apply it to the cases, which is really exciting. Another unique piece of our, our educational experience is a four-year portfolio. And the portfolio is broken down into four components. There's a clinical scholarship, ethics professionalism, and service. All of our students do to service activities. Um, and there's, there's components they have to do each year, but the service activities culminate in their second year they have to do a service project, and the fourth year they have to do a service project. The second year project can be more collaborative, the fourth year needs to be a little more independent. We know that to be a successful healthcare professional, service has to be just part of your persona and part of what we do. And while many, or if maybe even most of our students have done service activities before they've ever been admitted, we want to make sure everybody has that experience and they write reflections on how this has changed their attitude. And it's just really exciting to see that our, we know our students are walking out of here with this heart of service to the profession and the community. That's just one piece. Another piece is the clinical component, which has activities each year. The first year they have to use a camera. You know, if you're going to document patient care activities, you got to know how to use a camera and what an f-stop is. And, and there's some a portfolio that they have to turn in certain pictures with the object blurred and the background in focus, or the background blurred and the object in focus, and other activities, including some intraoral shots. The clinical component actually culminates in a capstone clinical case. The students have to present one of the cases they one of the patient experiences they did and worked up from start to finish in front of their peers, their classmates, and also a faculty board. And they get grilled on the clinical decision-making, um, other elements of the course, and it has to be evidence-based practice and what they have to be able to justify the decisions they made in the case, cases um, with, with research evidence. 
and the cases are just phenomenal. The sort of uh, clinical experiences our students get and what they document and how well they document. We actually use these capstone cases. We tie that back to our case-based education course and use those in our case-based education. So we're actually using student cases that they've documented to teach our first and second year students on dentistry and where things are at. So these are real patient experiences that we use within our, our educational mod modality, student cases that we go back and then use in the first and second years, which is which is kind of exciting stuff. It's really, really unique and you can see the growth in this portfolio as, as the, you read over these student reflections and what they've done. The ethics professionalism piece, there's certain components every year and the fourth year experience is actually to write an ethics code for life and for practice. And you can just see the growth in the students as you read what they wrote in the first year versus the second year, third year, and the fourth year, that you've seen that this, they've matured in their thinking and their understanding and the way they're gonna apply ethics to their life. One of the historic strengths at UAB has been high clinical experiences. And we're very proud of that. And certainly very proud that our students are prepared for practice at graduation. Um, many, some years, most of our students don't do any additional educational experiences because they are ready for practice when they graduate. So we've maintained these high clinical expectations um, to the current point. And it's interesting when our students talk to peers at other institutions, they come back with, wow, we do a lot more dentistry than they do at these other institutions. The other thing we hear, and, and it certainly helps our students to get into postgraduate programs if they so choose, is that postgraduate programs know if they take a student from UAB, they're gonna be prepared. They come in with, with great clinical experiences, being able to synthesize the patient experience and actually apply it because they've had, I mean, how best to be a dentist other than do dentistry and apply it. So our students get a robust clinical experience, both in the comprehensive care of patients that are assigned to their treatment team and they work with a faculty group manager in, in managing a patient portfolio, but also specialty areas, um, lots and lots of experience in oral surgery and endodontics, pediatric dentistry, as well as community experiences. Um, our portfolio helps emphasize the, this community engagement, but so does our rotation experiences where we have students rotate with largely within driving of the Birmingham area to, to areas where they can um, get experience in geriatric dentistry, um, at-risk populations, pediatric experiences in these community settings, which helps tie in and strengthen UAB's connection with these with the community, but also helps shape our students' hearts into wanting to give back to the community. So we have a very robust clinical experience, both in, within the building, but also with that outside the building. And being in a, a major academic health center, there's also some experiences that are very unique to being in a big major academic health center, such as being able to go to a tumor board. All our students get to experience tumor board in the hospital. Well, this is a multidisciplinary workup of a head and neck cancer patient. And I, you know, obviously surgery needs to be there, radiation oncology, but so does dentistry, both for the pre-treatment workup and take care of dental needs and potential infections and things that actually can endanger a patient's life, but also the post-operative and post-treatment management of the patient. And dentistry is a, a, a vital part of that treatment team, and our students all get to experience this multi multidisciplinary workup of a, a hospital patient, which is which is really a tremendous experience. I think to myself sometimes, if I was applying to dental school, what would I like to see in a dental school? I'd like early clinical experiences, a robust biomedical science curriculum, high clinical experiences in general, interactions in the community, and proven metrics on success on licensing exams and on the national board dental exams 
as well as placement into specialty programs. And UAB, that really defines UAB and that is the strengths of UAB because we have all of that. Um, of course, this is a place I would want to go to dental school, even though I didn't go to dental school here, <laughs> um, because the metrics just bear out that this is a great program. We have, bar none, best in the entire country, the best Associate Dean for Academic Affairs. Um, the school is so blessed and so lucky. Um, and I just want to say, I'm honored and you're welcome.